we are looking for fully differential op amps or fully differential systems. The typical differential op amp can be connected in this fashion. You can see from here, this is a, these are two inputs of a differential op amp and uh, you are receiving V in 1 and V in 2 and uh, there are two outputs VO1 and VO2 which are fed back in a negative fashion, negative feedback from both sides and if you have only single ended, the output could have been in the center, okay, which is a what we have already done earlier. In this case, we have two outputs and we are feeding it back. Please remember both are negative feedbacks. Right now, for the sake of this uh, stability and everything and performance, I chose R1, R1, R2, R2, but they are different also can be solved a case in which there are some issues will come later. Now, if why differential, we already discussed it last time, one of the interesting point we said there was anything noise sitting on these can be cancelled, okay. Because if you take the difference of VO1, VO2, uh, the noise which is super reading either inputs can also get cancel van subtractions. This is what we said, but there are a few more interesting things which is of relevance and I think that should go first before we start noise. For single output op amp, a typical amplifier shown here which is an in inverting mode amplifier and uh, the output looks something like sinusoid, let us say if input is a sinusoid and you receive VO max, VO min, if there is no distortion then V O max will be equal to V O min and we define a output common value V O common or V O V C M as the common mode voltage at the output which is sum of V O max plus V O min by 2, okay. The maximum you can reach is V D D, the lowest you can get to V S S and therefore sum could be 0 or if V S S is 0 it could be anything else. So V C M is something which you can decide how much you want by deciding up to which these two will actually go. In case they are equal as the shown here, then the VCM is a VOC is or maybe VOCM I should say or VCM we shall say later is 0. Uh, please look at it the system which I have shown you earlier just a minute before th this is symmetric, symmetric to this, okay. This is symmetric structure is called balance structure. In case of balanced fully differential system, we can also figure out what will be VO1 and VO2 independently, okay. And if I subtract, what can happen at the net output I which I am going to get. So I repeat, this is a single stage op amp or sorry, a single ended op amp. Now I am using it, similar structure which I shown earlier to have a differential mode op amp, fully differential. So you may have for VO1 and VO2 because of opposite polarity they are, they may look like this and if I subtract take a differential of them, the peak values is VO max minus win minus VO max minus VO min and if they are equal and opposite then twice of the earlier values you can attain. However, the common mode which is still subtraction of the two is still 0 because we are holding them equal this and this, this and this are same. So the common mode is still average value which is still 0. So please remember that by making a differential, I am still able to get VCM 0 which I wish if I, I, I can set any other value. But we can get the output which is VO1 minus VO2 differential output is double that of the single ended ones. So one feature of the fully differential is you can get twice the value of outputs swings. So what is this called? The swings, the swings in the case of differential op amps is larger compared to single ended system. Many applications require larger signal outputs, but you do not want to reach saturation, I mean this nonlinear zones in VOVI, this may be one possibility in which you can get larger output swings. Is that point clear? Otherwise for larger output, if input increases, you may reach into a non-linearity zone of your VI characteristics and then you get distortions. We will see that later. Now the problem which is why this kind of amplifiers are used, one is of course swing. The other is of course for most of the circuit which requires higher gains, 
differential systems are very popular. But as soon as I say higher gain, we will see what kind of loads I should have compared to single ended op-amp which we already discussed. So the issue, let us say we need an amplifier which has a higher gain and uh, we also request, uh, we also desire that such an amplifier has large signal to noise ratio. For your sake of uh, those who have not done earlier this, a signal to noise ratio is the maximum signal output power divided by output noise power, okay, is the ratio of this is called signal to noise ratio SNR. If P square signal is the peak value of, which this is the peak value of this square by 2 is the maximum signal and output noise power is gone V O n bar square or V O n square bar average value. Please remember if I use, I uh, will solve this in the noise case these values but these are trivial. One can solve that V O n square for a single ended case is 1 plus R 2 by R 1 square 4 K T R 1 into F n and F n is called the noise bandwidth. This 4, 4 K T R is something probably we will see soon in few minutes which is essentially the thermal noise of a resistor. So the output noise voltage square if it is always expressed in square terms, the Y square anyone essentially represents power. So V square by R if R is 1, we represent power by V squares. Whereas in the case of fully differential, it happens to be twice that of this square. However, you also see the swing in the case of single ended is just V max minus V min where in the case of full differential it is twice that of view, view max minus view min. Swing is also larger. So if I square this, I will get 4, this is half. So still SNR will be how much larger or smaller? Twice that of single ended op amps. Is that clear? This will give you 4, this is half. So 4 by 2 which means at least signal to noise ratio will double when I use fully differential systems. There is another term which we will see in the case of analog designs which is called noise figure. Uh, noise figures is explained as SNR at the output divided by SNR, sorry SNR at the input divided by SNR at the output. Some other time when we come to actual noise figure calculations. These are the specification for a given amplifier. They will specify you typically what is the SNR needed. Okay. So the kind of thing which I am I was trying to talk to you is that for higher gain one and the second is higher SNR. So if you are fully differential, one can say is twice that of single ended amplifiers and larger the SNR, better is the amplifier. Is that clear? Signal to noise ratio larger means lower noise higher signal in a ratio. Okay. So it is better to use differential amplifiers, fully differential amplifiers instead of single ended op amps if you are looking for higher SNRs. Sir, but in single ended there are AC current is twice at that point. Where? Single in single ended the problem is slightly different. In this case single ended since the one end of the circuit we are only putting diode connected load. So the load at the one end only is RO3 parallel RO4 in the single end of pan. Whereas in this case, now I will show you I can have larger ROs on the both sides and that by increasing the gain as well as increasing the SNRs. Okay. Okay, this uh, the equivalent circuit of a differential amplifier both at the input and output. I will post it on the website, you can check it, it takes a little time. One can express inputs for the differential stage. One, I will show, I will please read it in case you do not, I will come sometime. Then I can get some relationship between VID, IIC, VIC. By similar argument, I can put an equivalent T network for the output of a different, fully differential system. And again, I can get VO1, VO2, VOD, and VOC accordingly. This is what has been done. And using this, we will be able to calculate ACM and ADM for a fully differential amplifiers. Okay, please remember, I am, I am sorry I am not able to spend time on this because there are a lot many things to be done, but I am going to post it so you can look all of it. For example, five, before we go ahead, the VOD is VO1 minus VO2 which is called ADM times VID 
and for common mode VOC is VO1 plus VO2 which is ACM times VIC. So we can evaluate both VODs and VOCs and what is imp important for us in this particular this common mode voltage should be fixed and let us see why I am so much worried about fixing the common mode voltage. The theory about this please read it on my website in case there is an issue there maybe some other day I will again explain to you. Just figures do not write right now because it will be available to you. We keep saying to maintain a good common mode voltage we have said that normally fully differential systems are used for higher gains. Okay. Now if you see if you have a, this is your standard double ended op amp okay, one at VO1 and other is VO2 and to make it common mode or rather to make it simpler to first to understand I have connected output of this to the input of this. In normal case what will be here the resistance output to input R but right now I chose R to be even feedback can be negative feedback differential feedback. So this is a differential feedback which I kept this is your bias circuit the, these devices receives a potential VB which decides the ROs of M3 and M4 is that point clear M3 and M4 receives a potential VB which decides the RO3 and RO4 of this, this is not diode connected load this fact has to be appreciated. This is through P channel and the lower current ISS is governed by this N channel mirror shown here. Now the problem which is worrying me right now is this, if everything goes well what is the output resistance of this arm? RO3 parallel RO1 what is the output resistance of this arm RO4 parallel RO2. So GM times that is the voltage which I can get gain I can get individually. My problem is now something more. My assumption is this current is ISS is governed by this device and this potential is governed by this P channel device which is also a current source. Let us say for reasons variety of reasons, sizes, abilities, what are reasons, these two currents are not equal. In a Kirchhoff law one forces the current should be equal but let us say it starts with to, to equivalent saying I may say okay to put it non-equivalent say I put a small resistor in between which probably can then control the current and then drops here or not drops here. Now this issue which looks to be very odd is very interesting for to understand. If this current which is essentially flowing in this current in IDS3 or IDS4 is not same as ISS by 2 and ISS by 2, we want them to happen but let us say for variation purpose it does not occur. Okay. Now what can happen? There are two possibilities can happen this current is larger than ISS by 2 or this current either way this or this, this current is less than ISS by 2 because of the P source current is not same as N source current, is that clear to you? Now if that happens, let us say what are the problems which we can get, I repeat this is essentially please just see the figure. I am, I am saying equivalently saying this is given in Ravadi's book, this is I7P, or maybe right now I can say this is I6N and across them there is output resistance ROP and RO for this sources RON. If these are not equal in this arm there will be IP minus IN which is whichever is higher minus plus sign will appear and since the at this node these are parallel trans resistors. So there is this at this node I have IP minus IN times ROP parallel RON. Normally what should have been there? 0 drop across there are two current sources no drops there should have they have balanced it out but it may happen that P channel current may not be exactly same as N channel current 
and because of that this node voltage is not at 0. Is that clear? Now this is a worry which in real life occurs, okay. It is not something which I am thinking about as a new thing. Now if that happens, I, as I said, the other things are explained normal op-amp business, so there is nothing more to write. What is negative feedback's purpose? To stabilize the system. I am stabilizing. So I believe that with this any change should have actually been managed. But to my surprise, I find this negative feedback which is actually a differential feedback does not solve the problem which I am going to face. Normally what is the negative feedback purpose is to stabilize the system. It should pull down or pull up to get to a normal mode. Here I am now trying to show you it does not. Even if there is a differential negative feedback, this does not return to equivalence. Okay. So here is the issue which you should look into. You can really write down if you wish. The last line is what is bothering me that the current in M3 or M4 may be larger than ISS by 2 or less than ISS by 2. If P channel currents are not same as N channel currents. Now if this happens, what can happen to us? Please remember ISS is controlled by whom? 5 M5. IDS3 and IDS4 are current controlled by M3 and M4. Is that which are governed from 6 and 7 mirrors, okay, M6, M7 mirrors. You first write down and we will take the two cases and we will happen what is going to a problem if this happens. This envisage Raj what could have happened if say it is larger, IDS3 is larger than ISS by 2 what could happen? You cannot hold this situation. So if you want to make it equal then what should happen to something? Some transistor must change its status. Otherwise two currents cannot be equal. Is that correct? That change of status is worrying me the most because change of status means the resistance of that device will change and if resistance changes my gain changes. So though my common mode, I mean differential mode feedback was there, but I still feel change in outputs. Okay. But let us see if you finish this, then I will discuss this. The two issues of interest is, let us say the current, drain current of M3 or M4 is larger than ISS by 2 or less than ISS by 2. These are not issues which are trivial. This is in real designs. These issues keep coming at least in fully different stage. This is what we are elevating and that is why that they become very popular uh, open systems for many of the applications, fully differential. But what is the problem? Cost, extra kuch karo, pay for that. Okay. When I already shown you fully differential can always be used as single ended, look at the single end only and do not worry about the other one. Okay, so there is no issue if we really use this as a single ended amplifier. IDS34 is the current drain current of M3 and M4. Is that correct? ISS by 2 is the current in M1 and M2, half up. Okay, as like I said, this is been given from uh, Rajavi's book, though my nomenclatures are slightly different from them and the way I have written, they might not have written. So that is the only difference, but the content is same as Razavi's book. This is under the section in OPAM called common mode feedback, okay, CMFB. Abhi aai raha hai, aapko ki ja Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So case, take the first case, IDS34 is larger than ISS by 2. Please remember. I, IDS, ISS is controlled by five, five, 5 transistor current which is coming from N channel mirror whereas IDS 3, 4 is coming from M7 mirrored P channel. Now if these are greater, we will like to restore IDS 3, 4 equal to ISS by 2. That is the natural uh, in a Kirchhoff law in a one arm positive to negative end, one current only can flow. But in reality right now it was instant and ray did not, which means VO2 or VO1 to be same in normal cases. However, currents in M3, M4 then must reduce. 
I must say what is there. Let us say this is my current in M1, M2, ISS by 2. This is coming from IDS 3, 4 which is following because of the current in the drain current of M3 or M4. If this current has to reach here, what should I do? It should traverse back to reach this point and what is this point then will make seven, uh, 3 and 4 enter into because that Vx value if I have to fix a Vo1, Vo2, I have to same then M3, M4 must come out of saturation and try to enter linear mode, is that clear? You said that current is larger but the current which N channel M1, M2 was received was ISS by 2, this was larger so it tries to reduce itself so that the currents are same so that Kirchhoff law is valid and if that happens M3, M4 comes out of saturation. What is the advantage of the system we were discussing? High gains. Did we now have the high gains? Because M3, M4 would be in a linear zone which is a smaller R on, therefore gains will actually fall. Is that correct? Gains will actually fall. Now this is an issue if IDS34 is greater than ISS by 2. The possibility exists N channel current may be larger than P channel, so opposite can also occur. So to say IDS 3, 4 is less than ISS by 2. ISS by 2 is coming from which device? M1 and M2 or M5, is that correct? M1, M2 is receiving current from the tail current M5 which is ISS which is coming from N channel M6 transistor, is that okay? So let us, as everyone thought over it, so let us go to the next case. If IDS34 is less than ISS4, ISS which is supplied by M5, now we say IDS34 is here and M1, M2 which is receiving half the ISS current from I5 is following this IV law, okay. Now what will happen? If this is to be made equal, then M5 will now come out of saturation what will happen to M5 if it comes out to saturation? Then the REE or this RO5 becomes very small. Do you recollect what will happen to other some other parameter of open? The common mode gain is proportional to 1 upon REE. If that becomes common mode gain will increase. So what will decrease? CMLR. So by if it does happen that the other current is uh, IDS3 is smaller than this, the amplifier Vx may remain same Vo1, Vo2 but device will now show you much lower CMRR, is that clear? So a case which looked very trivial otherwise has actually, though we have a differential feedback, we are connecting gate to the output. So we have a feedback and in spite of that, such a situation is or it is not returning back, it is actually reaching one end, okay. This is something is not correct. So if I can make something common mode constant, then the my CMR will not be dependent on this situation. So let us see further, is that okay? Five transistor current will reduce so that it becomes equal to IDS34 or IDS3, whatever it is which means M5 will come out of saturation and therefore by doing this it will actually reduce the uh, increase the common mode gain or reduce the common mode rejection ratio, okay. Now these issues are looks to be uh, you know many people believe this ne never happens but it is not so, it does happen and you need to put a circuit which is called common mode feedback which retains the common mode. If something increases, it will reduce, if something goes down output, it will pull it up, okay. So that always KMRR remains constant, so is the gain, the output resistance remain as high as they can be, okay. So now we say average of op-amp output is defined as common mode output CM, CBCM which is VO plus, plus VO minus by 2. 
let us say by full swing we get VO plus goes to VGD, VO minus goes to VSS and let us say VGD is 2.5, VSS is minus 2.5, then what is VCM? 0, okay, VCM is 0. But let us take a single supply op amps in which VGD is 5 volt and VSS is 0, in which case VCM is 2.5. I can actually decide to have any of the VCM values between VDD and VSS of my choice, okay, which I can fix. So it is necessary for a fully differential amplifier to be stable, just differential feedback does not help you. And one needs what we call as common mode feedback or CMFB as the word goes and this allows you to fix a value of VCM. Is that correct? Because VOs are coming out of the current, so if you can fix them, then the outputs will be always, VCM will be always adjusted to VO max plus VO min. Please remember it need not be VDD, it need not be, it can be any value in between 0 to VDD, okay, minus VSS to VDD. You can fix anywhere, choose any value, average of this, those two will be the VCM value, which is DC value which you want to decide on. Now how do I decide, uh, normally I will prefer if it is double ended I should keep VCM 0, if it is single uh, supply rail then I should have to fix VCM value to a fixed choice of my choice. How do I then give a feedback, here is something as everyone wrote, noted down, these are something not necessarily useful directly in real spice also fails many times in not having, if you do not have CMFB circuit your amplifier may not function properly, it starts actually ringing too much for a long time, output never settles, okay. These are one some issues which you will see in real life. So you must put CMFB circuit to stabilize that out, okay. A typical CMFB circuit is shown here, this is your DFAM and this IDS3, IDS4 are coming from some VB and mirror as we did. I actually do one thing, I figure out what is VO1 and VO2, so I must first sense them, okay. So there is some circuit which is called common mode sense circuit, it figures out what is the VO1 and VO2 values, okay. Then from those two values it generates what we call as volt, CMFB voltage, VCM. Then we compare it with the desired value which is chosen VCM which is called reference voltage in a comparator. If it is larger or smaller correspondingly the control voltage call it V control if you wish will be larger or smaller minus or plus or whichever way values you fix. This value can control the voltages to either these two or these two. I have shown you both ways. Some people actually control these currents, some people control this current. Anyway, you have to bring it down to equal from either on the top or from the bottom. So please remember we sense VO1 and VO2 outputs, sense them, generate this, compare with reference, create a control voltage which controls the currents in either IDS34 or IDS34, uh, IDS3 or IDS4 or ISS, one of them can be controlled. So the either we can change the tail current or we can change the load currents. Why when these circuits are shown, this is the principle behind the CMFB circuit which we are going to show and in that case the way circuit which I have, I am controlling the load currents, okay. But same can be used for I5 current also, ISS current. Kya problem ho sakta hai? if I use CMFB circuit which is also to some extent an amplifier kind of system, what can it create? It can create stability issue, you are increasing another RC time constants with it, is that clear to you? Ek naya device laga hai, uske saath ek aur RC aya. The system may become unstable, so in a normal case of OPAM, how do you stabilize that? by actually putting a Miller capacitance in series to a resistance pole splitting or directly Miller poles, okay. So that the phase margin is relatively 50 degree around, so you will have to do full analysis with 
two embed completely supported by RC network and figure it out whether even with this it stabilizes. Okay. So, there is a uh, it is not so trivial, but typically if the loads are larger it happens to be stabilized. So, you do not have to do it, but I do not want to say a, a priori unless you see why. So, let us say I put 10 puff, yes it will stabilize. This is natural phenomena, okay. but some other time. Okay. Is that okay Siddhan? So, here is a circuit which is very uh, simple and popular. Please remember I am only generating VCM, VCM FD, this is only generating the common mode feedback voltage, how to generate it, which includes the comparator. So, it is essentially control itself I am generating. I have two transistors M1 and M2 which is my sense which is receiving signals VO1 and VO2 or VO plus VO minus. Is that okay Santosh? M1 and M2 are my sense devices. Each receives VO plus VO minus or VO1, VO2 which are names we have been following. Then there are another two transistor M5, M6 which are so connected that the source of this and all are in channels. Okay. The source of this is connected to M1 and source of this is connected to source of M2. Is that okay? M1 source is connected to M5 and M6 source is connected to M2. M5 and M6 receives the value of PCM which you want to set for. Okay. That is the value you set there. Then this M7, M8, M9 are essentially our current sources because they are given from a fixed supply VB1, VB2 or maybe from the band gap references okay, so that these are constants. So please remember these are current sources. You can also ask me I could have done one single current source, think of it why I do it in series, okay. think of yourself. If not, maybe I will ask later. I could have done with one series transistor, one bigger transistor or the L length is larger, which I have tried. What is larger length helps? The lambdas are higher and therefore you get, uh, lambdas are smaller, therefore you get larger arrows. So, this is some kind of pseudo cascodes, okay. It is not really cascode, but it is called pseudo cascodes, okay. okay. These are current sources, and same currents are flowing here. Now let us say VO plus and VO minus are such that the average value of them is larger than the common mode voltage. This is the first possibility. These are larger, the, that average value of them is larger than the VCM. The other case could be they are smaller so that their value, average value is smaller than VCM. So two possibilities. If they are larger, what will happen to currents of these? If VO plus and VO minus are larger, M1 and M2 will draw larger currents, VGS will increase with them. But they are actually getting currents from the current sources. These are of course diode connected loads. Okay. These are, I am pushing fixed current, please look at it, I am pushing fixed currents. Is that okay? But these two start drawing larger current. So, which will draw smaller current? M5 and M6 will draw smaller currents because they are that is what we are added actually. Okay. That together gives me these two currents. So, if VO plus and VO minus or VO1, VO2 average value is larger than VCM, these will draw larger currents, but for that these two should draw smaller currents. Now, if these two draw smaller currents, then the voltage IR drop across this will be smaller and Vm voltage will increase. If I increase the voltage, I can correspondingly change the load resistance currents or I5 currents. Is that correct? Now, take the next case. If these are smaller, what will happen? They will draw lower currents compared to this, they will start increasing the current. 
So, V C M F B will actually go below. So, it will increase or decrease as per requirements of increase or decrease of V O plus and V O minus and average value will be then retained to V C M. V O plus V O minus either way it will bring it back to its V C M value. Once the common mode feedback is fixed, I mean settles, that means your common mode rejection ratio is permanently fixed by you. This is something which CMFB allows. Few more things I I do not want to say more. These two currents are actually fed to the defam stage what we have seen with other cascode stage down at the single stage cascodes. So, it also divides the current in defam as well as the single gain stage. I have not shown the circuit. These currents can be chosen such that they feed both to difference as well as the cascode stage or gain stage. Change in those currents will decide if the defam stage is going down, it will actually boost the cascode stage. If the cascode stage goes down, the defam stage gain will increase, okay. So, that the output gain remains constant with the CMFB which I have not shown here, but that is why it retains higher gains and constant common mode value which fixes higher CMR, uh, SNRs, higher gains and stability. Of course, for stability I repeat, you may have to do a RC network for your both ended op-amps. Is that clear? That you cannot avoid because this additional, this network is going to create additional poles and zeros. So, the system has to be stabilized. So, you must actually do more RC network analysis to get whether your system is still stable. But remember, if the double ended outputs have a larger load to drive, which is the one of the major purpose of this, then compared to all others, that they will be the dominant poles and they will actually govern all the bandwidths and no other instability issue will come, okay. But this is something guesswork which I am telling unless you do, one does not know. So, I, do you get the point why I did common mode feedback because this is one of the major circuit which you will use in all your actual designs. Whenever there is an issue of uh, uh, stability or ringing starts, look at it somewhere your gains, I mean the currents are not matching. This matching problems can easily be handled by one common mode circuit. Price is additional power, lower bandwidths and extra area. So, of course, all this is at the cost of getting perfectly good high, highly stable and high SNR amplifiers. Is that clear? This fact has to be understood in actual designs because these are not a, normally used by everyone. We can do a many a times your circuit may function without that. But if it does not, the solution. Please remember every circuit I show does not mean you have to put it. If you design and it works, God saved you, okay. But if God is not ready to save, you can save yourself, okay. That is the trick behind all of it. This finishes everything related to op-amps. Of course, there are few more things unending here. Few more things you must remember whenever I want gain stage to higher, must cascode. This is something which we learned day one, cascode it. If I want to improve the bandwidth, see to it that the first dominant pole is at least far away so that the other poles shift further. So, the shifting of poles is one of the best is null. If you null it, your dominant pole is in your hand, okay. So, try to use null techniques, but nulls are not very easy to attain but as much as you can, okay. These are tricks which are as much as possible if you know higher SNR, higher gains, use always double ended fully differential system. The biggest advantage they give is the noise is eliminated. Even what is else is eliminated, the offsets are also eliminated. What is an offset voltage? The output is 0 but input differential is still there. So, which means you have to offset input to get output 0. This value also automatically gets cancelled because differential, this output also equally equal. So, both cancels in diff differentials, okay. So, these are very ideal amplifiers, okay. Okay, so this finishes essentially the op-amp based systems. 
प्लीज रीड रोजार बी बॉयज बेकर ग्रे वॉट एवर बुक्स यू हैव मैं सिर्फ बता ही सकते हैं आपको करना पड़ेगा सो वी स्टार्ट नाउ अनादर एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट विच इज एक्चुअली नॉट नेसेसरी टू एनालॉग बट इन एनालॉग इट बिकम्स वेरी वेरी सम प्रॉब्लम दो द वर्ड विच ऑल ऑफ यू आर सो फैमिलियर नॉइज वाई आई ब्रॉट इट बिफोर अदर फ्यू थिंग्स लेफ्ट बिकॉज आई थॉट दैट दिस इज एन इश्यू विच इज ऑल्सो नीड्स टू बी टेकन केयर ड्यूरिंग द डिजाइन इट सेल्फ जस्ट ना आई टॉक्ट अबाउट एस एन आर्स so this that preceded this but actually it should follow after this okay so we will look into noise with following points first what is a noise then what types of noise and then the mass model for the noise because we are interested not on all other devices we are more interested in mass circuits so we we'll look more mass models and finally for given mass circuits how do i evaluate the noise okay the word which we use in the case of amplifier is noise at which level we connect it input reflect noise is what we are interested in and not at the output noise not at the output but because of the output what input noise you will receive is of relevance and we'll see why i look into that little later what is a noise noise is a, anything which is unwanted or undesired signal which couples with desired signal or this is termed noise noise is not something very odd or bad or something you are none of you are from uh, anyone from communication background here see all micros okay in communication we will learn later the noise is not all that bad okay there are algorithms which use noise to improve the uh, signal to noise ratio okay you actually agn noise you add and you actually get a better figures better images at least in image processing so don't go by my statement that noise is bad okay uh noise is generated due to a random process okay uh, and limits the minimum signal level that a circuit can process with reasonable but acceptable quality noise is generated due to random process and limits the minimum signal level that a circuit can process with reasonable but acceptable quality the problem why i am interested before we uh, do some vcos or others is that in a normal analog design noise has something directly related to power dissipation it is related to bandwidth and it is also related to linearity okay and they they also are connected to each other as well okay they are also connected to is you have seen hexagons so the problem is noise cannot be eliminated in design because they may affect any of the basic parameter design which you want to do so a priori itself you should have an idea how much noise i have and how much i can tolerate okay that is the game in this so please remember noise is something unwanted and therefore and also random so what is essentially random some processes are called stochastic statistical behaviors so we don't know noise is how it behaves let's take a xt function which is periodic and then we can deterministically say that if this is your function at any given time t1 t2 t3 i can find the value of x which is xt1 or xt2 or xt3 if this is periodic well behaved function okay. however if the signal is random in nature as shown here i cannot predictably say because i don't know the nature of the function that at any instant of time what is the value of xt i have okay so that is my major worry that uh, it is indeterministic there are also other issues in noise and this is why i put it call correlated noise uh, many of you probably are aware uh, i don't i do I forgot the name but in a stadium when people come they are in 40000 to lakh people but that noise in the background hardly it is heard by you okay but what is that wave that they call it when all of them stand a uh, ha maximum if that is so happens it makes a huge noise so if the noise is correlated it can have a bombastic effects okay uncorrelated noise normally distributes out and an average value is not those that strong okay so please remember that noise have many features to understand but we are only concentrating more from analog design side the issues of other noise are also equally important okay. 
Of course, basic idea of noise reveal remains same irrespective whether I do an analog, digital, signal processing or whatever area, noise is a noise. Okay. So, do not get too much worried. Is that okay, Siddhan? It is even though the noise is random, most noise performs if you see, they at least show some average value, it is not 0, some average value. Okay. But of course, that decides if you do it averaging for a long period of time, very short period may become 0 or it may be very large or very small. So, if you actually average it for a very large time, then the noise will have an average power. So, for example, I have a resistor and I connect a VT source, then the power delivered is V square T by RL. So, if I use the average power for any random source VT, then it is 1 upon T tends to infinity, large, infinity does not mean really infinity. We use infinity because many of the integrals can be easily solved if I put infinity. Okay. So, minus T by 2 to plus T by 2 which is a period in which I am going to monitor V square by T by RL dT is the average power delivered for a resistor okay, by noise of Vt. Okay. Please remember this T has to be large to get reasonable averaging. Okay. So, for example, if this is your function and you take a square of that, this will be something like this and you can see there is some average value I can get, is that correct? As soon as I square it, I get some values which is reasonable enough and then I can get some average value which is V square aver averaging. Okay. In no normal all analysis, RL is chosen 1 ohm. Okay. In, so, voltage square is defined as watts uh, looks to be but we say V square. Okay. So, it should have been in watts, power is in watts, but since R is always chosen 1, 1 ohm per se, then the power average of a noise is essentially expressed in V square that is voltage square. Okay. That is the method of expressing. If there is additional load, you may multiply it to get the actual noise value. Is that correct? This is a RMS value. If you take every under root of this, then this is called voltage per load if you wish or just voltage. But in normal case, this is time domain analysis. But if you look at that the, if you take the frequency spectra for this, we find out that if at different frequencies, the power is not same. Okay. This is called private distribution with it or also called PST, power spectral density, PST. Okay. So, if we actually, if you look at the average power, we should look for spectral density for noise because at different frequencies noise have different values. Okay. So, that is the definition of noise spectrum. If noise average power is defined in frequency domain, we get what we call as noise spectrum which is called power spectral density or PSD okay. and it is defined as SXF, F is for frequency. Average power is carried by XT in a, let us say I have, I have a noise which I pass through a band pass filter if this bandwidth is 1 hertz, okay. band pass filter of 1 hertz bandwidth. If I pass through and square it, okay, I get X F 1 T square and in what is the range of frequency I use? Only 1 hertz. Xf can be expressed in terms of volt square okay, per hertz, volt square per hertz and voltage is expressed in under root of average. So, we say it is volt per root hertz. So, noise is expressed as volt per root hertz. Is that okay? At different frequency, I actually calculate like I calculated F1, please remember this 1 hertz which I sorry I should have, I made a mistake. The center frequency is F1 around which the bandwidth is 1 hertz, in a band pass you have to say where. Okay. So, I calculate similar thing at different frequencies F2, F3, F, Fn okay. and then plot 
is PSD versus frequency at different frequencies. Each will have a different value of this and then I plot essentially that is called the spectra. Is that clear? Please note down this then I will show the figure. So, I what is my next stage? At different frequencies I evaluate xf2 square, xf3 square. Every time I have a band pass of 1 hertz around the frequency of my choice. Okay, so if I do this SXF at different frequencies, okay, average value of that, so I get a spectra. This is called noise spectrum or power spectral density SF, SXF have, with F is something of the, of course this is random, this is not that for everyone same curve will come. This is some random figure which I draw, this is the kind of spectrum we get for noise actually. And since SXF has a unit of X square, under root of that as a unit of volt square by under root is volt per hertz is per root hertz. So, noise is essentially expressed as volt per root hertz, assumption is RLs are unit loads, okay. but normally it is not used. There is a very famous noise, what is it called? White noise. So, let us see what is the spectral density for that or spectrum for that. This is taken from Rajai's book, any other figure is good enough, okay. So, all that we did is find XF 3, 4, 5, 6 n with 1 hertz bandwidth for every point and then plot, okay. Is that okay? A white noise has a spectral density which says that from minus infinity to plus infinity is constant. That is why it is called white noise. Okay. Of course, uh, in a normal spectrum that minus infinity and plus infinity will have some larger bounds. So, so f1 to f2 is constant. Okay. Though in definition it is minus infinity to plus infinite frequencies, the noise is constant, spectral value is constant. Now, there is interesting part that I can modify the content of <coughs> white noise if I pass through a transfer function HS okay, which is HF is HS 2 pi JF. So, if I have white noise I pass through a transfer function of this nature which is HF square. So, if I multiply this essentially I mean I am going to get a band limited SYF. That means this noise will get limited in the range of transfer function. So, choice of transfer function allows me to get spectral density of my choice. You use this function as you want and white noise will convert into a pattern of your choice. Is that clear? That is the fun part in designing these circuits. Also, normally this noise spectra is minus frequency to uh, minus to plus it is always shown spectra is somewhere here because transfer function may be of square and right? it can take minus value and plus value square is the same. So, this method is if, if between these two band of this if it is SNX, okay you want to see the last one please have it. Okay. One sided set to Two sided say one side jate ma kya bolte hai? Integral of minus infinity to plus infinity is twice 0 to infinity. Same techniques is used. So, just double the amplitude, okay. That is how moist uh, spectra are shown one sided. After we are doing averaging, averaging means integral, okay. So, so a two sided spectrum can be converted to single sided with double the amplitude. So, this is the statistical behavior of noise. So, this was the first concept we wanted to give you that what is essentially noise is all about and how it is you can actually get the pattern of your choice. Which device or which system which is called a mixed signal circuit which is one of the most popular I do not know whether it should be called analog or digital which actually requires noise shaping. What is it called? AD, ADC, DAC, 
A to D converters and D to A converters requires <coughs> noise shaping to the maximum. Okay. You may have one loop, two loop just to shape the noise. So that signal to noise ratio is very large. And there is another term which, which is called signal to noise distortion ratio or SNDR, some big signal code some other time. So noise in analog is very, very important parameter because if the, please remember what will happen if noise is larger, you will require larger power to actually dissipate, okay. So your first hit will be power dissipation, okay. Okay, is it okay, figure trivial. Okay, so now let us see the three terms. Uh, many of us use very unknowingly that they are as if they are same. There are three famous words which is used in the case of systems. One is called the device or circuit related noise. Third, second term is distortion and the third is interference, okay. All are bad but they are different, okay. So let us look the three differently because we are more interested in the first part but in systems you will require even the other two as well. Okay. If the output waveform is which is a function of input time some transfer function and if that value which you now see in reality is not same as if it should have come then you say output is distorted, distorted from the ideal value you thought you should have. Like you have view of in characteristics from these two inputs, dv0 by dvn is constant, okay. So, to say any value here or here, I can predict the output by just multiply is equal to mx, okay, c0 here. So, so I know the slope that is the gain in this case. So I know dv0 by dvn, however if I exceeds vn1 or vn1 either side then the view of vi characteristics does not seem to remain linear. This essentially means you are entering a zone which is called non-linearity zone, okay. And as soon as you enter non-linearity zone you can see dv0 by dvn is a function of vn. Okay. So, it is a non-linear term. So, if you expand it by Taylor series, you will get x, x cube a x b x square c x higher order terms, okay. which means some power in the output is now deleted to one frequency, second frequency, third, fourth and highest power delivered generally is into the third harmonic and therefore, it is called third harmonic distortions, okay. Second harmonic in many circuits we tune it that is we reflect it back but third cannot be. Therefore, the distortions are normally strongly related to third harmonics, okay. We also feel as if it is due to only active device. No, non-linearity come because of variety of other reasons. One of course is active device non-linearity it is not linear. Okay. So, this non-linear distortion is essentially because of the non-linearity in the transfer characteristics, okay. So, we say the distortion occurs due to non-linearity in transfer function of active devices, but there is a possibility which is not just, just there, it is always there. Even in passive components, there is a non-linearity. For example, cables you know cable sabke ghar mein it's like a transmission line okay it's an rlc circuit okay which also have different response at different distances okay because the z0 change there or z reflected will be different so even in a cable you may get a distortion okay so you always say don't increase length so much put repeater somewhere even in fibers it's a distortion there is also inhomogeneity in the path, the cable RLC may be varying all through which may not be a constant or in a fiber, the multimode fiber becomes 
some way only few not multi but smaller numbers. So much of the area is lost and therefore much is radiates. Okay. So any inhomogeneity in the path also may lead to distortions. So but we are more interested in devices because that is what we use often. But in systems anywhere noise can I mean distortion can occur. The next worry for me is the interference. So if you have one spectra that is one signal spectrum and you have another signal spectrum which is close by then they may overlap okay. This essentially uh, is called intermodulation. Simplest intermodulation thing can be understood without even a receiver. You have a two transmission lines or two signal lines. If they are close by due to just mutual inductance coupling, signal in one may connect to the signal in the other. This is called crosstalk. Okay. This is called crosstalk. When is crosstalk highest? Two lines are moving. When the signals are in opposite direction, the crosstalk is peak of both are okay, like differential. Okay. So highest crosstalks. Okay. So, but in RF receivers, because of the antenna input you receive, there is an image which actually interferes and creates higher harmonics. Okay. And that needs to be further filtered. Okay. All filters leak DCs. So that is major worry there some other time. Okay. So the interference is a very common in most RF circuits or RF systems. Okay. Like an antenna, you have two, uh, two lines on a uh, any uh, dielectric. As you bring closer, the radiation pattern of one will interfere with radiation pattern of the other. So intermodulation will start. And the pattern which you will see at the end at the antenna may not be single lobes, may be a multiple lobe with diffract, deflectivity, deflectivity almost lost. Okay, it may go scattered out. Okay, so everywhere uh, the intermodulation is very common thing. We are not so much right now worried about these two. The distortions we will probably, but uh, we will always say will remain in linear. So that's the reason why we call analog circuit as linear circuit because they want to remain in linear modes okay otherwise it could have been non linear circuits okay okay so here is the third and the most important among them is the noise device noise okay electronic components produce combination of some noise with the spectra shown here if it is constant then we say it's a white noise then there are some noise which are inversely proportional to frequencies. They are called one upon f noise and there are certain noise which are inversely proportional to one upon f square. This rarely you see in the books, so I added this for you. Okay. It is called popcorn noise. The word popcorn noise is, of course, is another name if you are in a communication area, it is called burst noise. Since the burst occur when the data rate is much higher than with the line can hold, then the noise starts picking up. So it's called burst. Okay, and uh, the burst is essentially like popcorns. You know they pop up, so it's called burst. Okay, so it's called burst noise or popcorn noise. Very yes, larger the frequency, smaller is the noise. Okay. No, but some other noise must be taking over there. Okay. So this is. This is one kind of noise which has a frequency dependent noise. Okay. Now it is limited by lower frequency, that is what 1 upon f square is telling. Okay. However, there are another class of noise which are generally, generally thermal noise as the word goes. However, other than thermal noise also there are other kinds of noises available and these are named as short noise, okay. short. आपको एक नाम बताते हैं मिस्टर जॉनसन ये सब नॉइज उन्होंने बनाए हैं बट द मोस्ट कॉमनली नोन थर्मल नॉइज इज एसेंशियली नेम जॉनसन नॉइज द फर्स्ट रिसर्च वाज डन बाय जॉनसन ऑन एवरी नॉइज व्हिच आई टॉक इज एसेंशियली जॉनसन्स पेपर्स ओके एंड दीस आर ऑलमोस्ट 100 ईयर ओल्ड पेपर्स 
still stands. They do research. Hundred years अभी तक हम नहीं भूल पाए ना. That's research. Newton के पहले भी apple गिरते ही थे, पर Newton को दिखा. तो वैसे ही है. There are hundred things which we think are there, but never bother. Maybe I still time to do that. अभी थोड़ा research का problem क्या होता है कि it is more money dependent. You need large equipments. The third type of noise which is popular is called GR noise, and the last and the foremost, which is very very troublesome uh, in uh, actual analog design, is called KT by C noise. Okay, this is very very tough to handle. Okay, so you can see from here KT by I'll come back to it. KT by C noise is generated from the resistor. But there is no R here, so that's the fun. That I have a resistor which is creating noise, but my noise is essentially independent of that resistor. Okay. So क्या हो रहा है? फिर फिर भी noise क्यों आ रहा है? So there is some issue which we'll see in KT by C noise, which is very very troublesome in analog design. You can see from here before I quit. If I increase C, KT by C will go down, assuming T is constant. C बढ़ाओगे तो सभी एनालॉग चेंज हो गया तो C को तो हाथ नहीं लगा सकते ज्यादा तो दैट इज द वरी कपास सी इज कपैसिटर सो C को होल्ड करेंगे तो एवरीथिंग गोज अवे ना दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम विल सी विच सी सी इज एन आउटपुट कैपेसिटी ना एनी टाइम यू सी लू सी यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम ओके एंड विल सी नाउ सो दिस इवनिंग विल स्टार्ट विद द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ईच ऑफ देम and go up to device and to a circuit how to calculate noises